Okay, so recording has started. Um, <clears throat> okay, so guys, <laughs> as you can see, I'm no longer using uh, two two screens. Um, I'm I'm using a new machine. So if there are any glitches, uh, please bear with me. Uh, this is a new machine. I've just started using it now. So yeah, <laughs> I hope that <clears throat> there won't be any glitches. Um, and it's a Windows machine. So I've had to install um, this uh, uh, was it WSL that I learned from about it from you guys. Uh, so the Windows uh, subsystem for Linux. So let's see how that goes. Uh, um, Anastasia, are, are you logged in with your account or with the Ten Academy account? With both both accounts. Okay, could you help me admit people so I can sure. focus on the tutorial? Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, cool. Uh, so um, I've created a slide deck. If you can find it, and I think it's already been shared. So I've been editing it. Uh, from from the repo, uh, uh, not from the repo, from the drive, which is here. I think it's the same name. Uh, so you guys can look at it, uh, but we'll be going through uh, some of these things. Uh, so it's it's incomplete. Uh, actually, I'm not sharing it. Let me share my screen. My bad. bad. I can share my screen now. Okay, uh, I think I'm just going to log out and log back in. I think I did something. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm trying to share my screen. I think I did something that disables me from sharing. Uh... So it says I must grant permission in order to share. Uh, I s uh... Okay, um, Anastasia. Anastasia. Yes. yes um, could you could you log in with the Ten Academy account uh, so I can log in as myself? I think I disabled Onshe. Um, yeah, so I'll have to log out and log back as myself because I'm not able to share.
Mutha, if you're talking, you're muted. I think we can see about more. Sorry. But, okay. Was, okay. So I was saying I clicked too quickly and I, I disabled myself from sharing. Uh, that's why I've looked back as, my, as myself. But let me see if I can fix it quickly. Uh, sorry, guys. Because um, it's asking me to grab. So there was two options. And then I chose the wrong one um, when I was trying to share. Okay. Uh, is there anything in your inbox, um, Anastasia? Can you? Okay, let me see if I can ask someone. So I've just asked the team, hopefully someone will assist soon. Um, can, can someone uh, at least maybe attempt to share their screen and see if, we, if they're able to? Let me share mine and try to share that, uh, that slide. Okay, yeah, if you could do that, then I could just, uh, but I, I have other things that I want to share as well. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, let's see. If you could try, I think I, I don't know how, uh, maybe, okay, let me see settings. Uh, oh, so you, okay, so you are able to share, okay. Uh, as, as 10 Academy, right? Yeah, as 10 Academy. Okay, uh, if you, let me try again, if you can close. Okay. Try again, yeah. Because if, if it was only the, 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 uh, the presentation would be fine, but I, I also want to share something else. See, it says you must grant permission in order to share your screen. So I'm not sure who has to grant this permission. Okay, I'm going to try again login as 10 Academy. Yeah. I'm speaking and I'm, I don't know why it keeps disabling my mic when I look back in. So I found it. It's on my machine. Uh, it's on my browser, actually. Uh, so I just need to fix it. So I just need to fix that. Uh, okay. Can I refresh?
You're muted. No, I was saying, let me see if we can use a different browser, because I think this is on, um, uh, it's on Firefox. So I've disabled myself on Firefox. Uh, yeah, because I was clicking too quickly. Uh, so if, uh, okay, hello. Okay. Oh, no. Just one sec, guys. I know this is eating into our time. Uh, Okay. Okay. So I'm. Okay. On edge now. Let me try. Okay. Okay. It works now. Yeah. I disabled something on on my uh, Firefox that yeah made things very difficult for me. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, trying to move too quickly. Uh, it's got. Uh, it's got its consequences. Okay, so I should be because I've shared my whole uh, screen, so I should be able to show my um, my Firefox. Uh, please let me know if you can see it. Yes, we can. You can see it. Okay, perfect. Uh, my sincere apologies, guys, about that. Uh, okay. Okay, this is a new machine. I hope the things that I know work. Okay, cool. Um, so you guys can see my presentation is in full screen. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so okay, so today we are talking about uh, Cosa inference, uh, which is uh, to exist, which is part of week eight. Um, um, which is part of the week eight uh, challenge, right? Uh, so I'm I'm not an expert, uh, you know, on this. Uh, you know, I've, yeah. So <laughs> I had to teach myself. So if if I say something wrong, uh, please correct me. Uh, but I've tried to you know uh, learn as much as as I can. Uh, about it, um, yeah. So that's that's a disclaimer. If I'm wrong at something, then please uh, correct me. Uh, cool. So this is the content um, that you know I'd like us to speak about. Um, okay. So I'll. Um, I want to show much of the screen but if i do a full screen um, i can't see anything else on the screen so okay yeah this this works better okay um so okay so you know the theory of course it's you know what is causal inference what are causal graphs uh, also known as uh, causal uh, graphical causal models uh, what are counterfactuals and who is uh, Julia Pell, right? Uh, so this is, you know, the most of the theory about this topic. And, you know, so when I was looking into it, I realized that actually, you know, we've looked at uh, A, B or hypothesis testing. So you may be wondering, you know, uh, what are the similarities? Uh, what are the differences? And I also remember uh, from, you know, when I used to be a hardcore software developer, there was a concept uh, called uh, feature toggles. Uh, if we have time, you know, uh, we, you know, I'll, I'll share, I'll, I'll mention a, a few things. 
about this. Um, I'm not a fundi at it, but there's a good link that I found uh, that I can share with you. And how do you actually, you know, uh, implement or run computations, uh, you know, to figure out, you know, causal inference to draw uh, causal graphs, uh, etc. Uh, so the implementations, of course, will be in Python. And in terms of, you know, applications in the real world, right, in you know the machine learning world or in the statistics world, what are the sort of the, you know, in areas where you can apply um, ideas around. Uh, cosine inference, right? Um, so, you know, in, in recommendation systems or recommender systems, uh, in chain modeling, cross cell modeling, and upsell modeling, uh, which is also also called when you go a, a bit further, when you actually apply uh, A B testing, then you can actually figure out, you know, if there's any lift, which is lift modeling. Uh, and, you know, uh, of course, you know, <clears throat> the you know, doing causal inference from a machine learning perspective, right? Although, you know, like, you know, these applications, you know, can shed some light in terms of how that can be applied. Uh, okay, so that's the introduction. So, you know, exactly what is uh, causal inference? Um, so they say that it's a process of determining the independent actual effect of a particular phenomenon uh, that is a component of a larger system. Um, so, you know, what exactly does that mean, right? Um, so, uh, I could say that um, this is how you, you know, if, if you, okay, let me just, uh, just give, show, show with, with this example, then we'll go back to that one. Uh, so, for example, um, the best way to explain it is that in you know traditional statistics, right, you have um, a joint distribution, right, uh, which is a, a distribution of of some you know, variables uh, which could be random, uh, which together, right, uh, you can sort of have some some probabilities, right, on that, and you can use that to infer uh, what can happen uh, in the future, right. Uh, now. You know how does sort of causal inference differ from that? It's that you know instead of you know uh, you have to look at concepts of you know observations uh, versus doing experiments, right? So instead of just observing the, the environment, um, what if you sort of did a what what they call it, maybe perturbation, right? Like you you make some change, like you do an experiment, uh, you make some change in that environment, right? Will you still be able to get um, the same output informed uh, by this change, right? So, in a you know traditional uh, statistics, you know sample in an environment, but you don't really uh, you know uh, change the environment. But once you change the environment, then you're you're trying to determine whether uh, you know some uh, variables have. An, an impact in other variables, right? Which uh, they like to say, uh, what it, correlation does not equate uh, causation, right? So with statistical inference, uh, you you know you you've, you can determine things like uh, association or correlation, but here you can actually figure out if you know some uh, variable in in your system um, or in in your environment has an actual impact in in the output of that. So when you actually make it, because as it is, you won't know for sure, right? But when, when you make a change from, for example, from P, and then you've got P prime, you know, what are you getting at, at the end here, right? Do you still get the same thing? Uh, for example, here, <coughs> they're giving an example of saying, you know, uh, you know, if you, if, if you are, so for example, here, uh, you, you've got a, the price of an item, right? And you've got you know sales based on that. But what happens when you double the price, right? Would you still get the same uh, sort of change, right? When you double the price, do you see also uh, the price actually being being doubled? You see that actually I think this should have been the sales being uh, doubled or, or half or something like that, right? So that's that's what you are you are trying to determine, right? So that's why they're saying <clears throat> one of the most important things that you need to understand is. You know what are the differences between you know causal inference 
uh, versus you know like your traditional uh, statistical inference, which is you know just the association uh, among variables or the correlation between those variables, which don't actually mean that uh, you know uh, a one particular variable, one particular independent variable, uh, actually informs the output of you know the dependent uh, variable right so that's that's why it's the actual effect right it's not just an association it's just you know if i change the sale price right what actually if i change the sale price what happens to the actual sales right uh so that's you know that's the the input that you're having that's the experiment instead of just ex uh, observing a static environment when you make a change uh, what then happens right um so that's that's the difference between the two uh you know with causal inference we're trying to figure out you know when we make changes in the system uh you know what do we get uh, as the output of that right and um we do uh, from the challenge i uh, have some data uh to do with the you know breast cancer in wisconsin right uh, and this just explains you know what the data actually is um i think it's actually here <laughs> i'm sure you guys have seen it you've been working on it you've been doing some uh, eda on this data uh so uh we will look at um in a bit so okay so this is just an explanation if you don't know what the joint distribution actually is uh so you can actually you know have um you know not just you know like the correlation or the association between two variables, but you're looking at, you know, even more uh, variables, how they actually relate to each other, right? So you can actually do causal uh, inference uh, on my, not just two variables, but you can uh, extend it to more than uh, two variables. Uh, but they do say that, you know, they should be in a, you know, sort of uh, the same uh, probability space, right? Um, yeah, okay, so cool. So I've, I've explained this um, now, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, what it actually looks like. Uh, so uh, we do have uh, some packages that you can, so this is just, you know, loading uh, the same, um, same data from here. Uh, and, and you can see this, this is the data, it's the, the IDs of the different, um, rows there <laughs> and i think you know our target would be the diagnosis right so this is the you know the independent variable that we're trying to understand whether you know any of this right any of these other variables as you can see them here you know the radius mean which is you know the average uh you know uh, i say radius of of i think it's the nuclei uh which is uh, to explain it here so it's the so it's a digitized image of fine needle aspirate of a breast mass uh so the cell nuclei right so that's what it, it's about um yeah so so all of this all of this uh, variables or quantities you know we you know if if for example if we make a change uh, to them, right? What then happens, right, in the system? Can we determine that, you know, maybe the area mean, you know, actually when we make that change there, does it actually, you know, change the diagnosis or not, right? If we change the smoothness mean, etc., does it actually change the diagnosis, right? So for now, we'd say, I think we have malignant, and I think the other one should be benign, uh, right? You guys know how to do distinct. Uh, can do that but um, yeah but it should be malignant or benign in terms of cancer so when we make those changes uh, in terms of causal inference uh, does that also change uh, the diagnosis or not right uh, cool so there is a nice uh, package uh, that you can install uh, called causal inference uh, which can assist you in terms of that work uh, and uh, you, you just install it with PIP uh, and you have a causal model there and you can generate some random data there, right? So these in the in the data that, that we have here, we have like three variables. We've got Y, which is, which is the target or independent variable, and we've got D, 
uh, which is um, tell you now. So uh, it's the treatment status, right? So whether because um, you remember um, in uh, testing and you know experiments and statistics, you can have uh, you know and, and it's actually they are also called trials. You can have whether you have a, a control or a treatment, right? So D actually says that of our data here or our data here, right? Uh, this Y D X, which is just random data, uh, has has that been? Is it part of the control? Which means that you know we haven't changed anything, or is it part of the treatment? Which means that we've actually changed something there, right? So that's what uh, D actually explains. So when you have D equals one, then that's been changed. When you put D equals zero, then nothing has been changed, right? Uh, it's like you know giving a, a placebo pill, right here, and then now giving the actual pill, right? If if you're testing for you know uh, whether the Pfizer vaccine works or it doesn't, work, right? That's what they're doing here. Um, and then X would be our actual data, right? So which is which is this? So you could think of X as you know from radius mean uh, up until all you know this column. So this one should not be here, right? So that would be your X, which is your actual data. And then D would be, of course, whether it's the treatment or not, and Y would be uh, the diagnosis here, right? That's what it would be. Uh, probably ID is is not probably not used anywhere here, right? Uh, it's just to uh, you know denote the extra row. Okay, cool. So so that's what it is. You can even see here, you know, this is the actual result that you get. And D would, you know, it's like either zero or one, and X would be the actual uh, data, right? Which is, it's a matrix, right? Uh, the number of rows and it's an N by M matrix, number of rows uh, times number of columns. And you can determine, you know, certain things, right? So what we've done is we've just said that, you know, we, we take this data, we put it in a causal, we fit it into the causal model, and we have a causal object. Uh, and then from there, we can figure out certain things, right? Like just some, you know, some other statistics in this case. Um, yeah, so we have, uh, we actually have, I think we can do learn of any of these. I think we have about, about 5,000, uh, you know, observations, right? Uh, and we are splitting them, right? Uh, you can think of, you know, um, yeah, you can think of, of it as train test split, uh, whatever. But, you know, so some of them are part of the control. So 2,568 are part of control. And these ones are part of the treatment, right? And so which means that these ones we're not changing, but these ones we are, you know, changing, right? Uh, and, and this is, you know, it's, a, it's an, um, I guess, uh, 5,000 by three, I think. Right, in terms of these are the different uh, columns in X, right? And it's just, you know, for now it's just random uh, data, uh, but, you know, some of them are being treated, of course, based on this flag, right, right here. But, so this is how you can actually look at it. Um, you know, this is just summary stats, but from the causal object, um, you can figure out a lot of things. Uh, so if I see. Right. So you can figure out, you know, propensity, uh, right, which is an object. I think there's, you know, nothing there. Uh, but you probably have to pass it some some other information there, uh, you know. So, uh, you know, propensity is more like a, uh, I, I didn't put it in the in, in the slide, but it's about, um, you know, what is the, what, it's like a probability, right? Uh, it's, it's, but it, I guess it's, it's a different a number, but it represents may that probability, uh, sometimes called a likelihood, um, et cetera. Uh, but that's what it's about to say. Uh, it actually makes more sense uh, when you're talking about uh, here, for example, <clears throat> you know, uh, things like, you know, uh, in a recommender system or in a chain model or whatever to say that, you know, what is the propensity, what is the uh, probability of, you know, when I make this change of something happening, right? 
uh, is the you know that's making a certain change that's increasing uh, the size of a button in in a website increase the you know um you know the the click through of of that button etc right so you can actually figure out those things out uh with this model right uh so it does it does have a, a number of things uh that it can give you right you can just you know play around with, with those uh but in in short i think i have like a list of the things that you can do with like a causal inference so you can estimate uh, the overlap and coverage distributions of course estimation of the propensity score as i've mentioned um you know uh, improvement of coverage balance through trimming uh I'm not sure what that is but i just think about it uh yeah so you can do uh, you know quite a number of things uh but i what it doesn't show actually is actually uh you know drawing um you know, uh, causal graphs, right? Which is which is the next uh, point that I wanted to talk about, right? Um, so, in terms of just uh, causal inference, that was that's what it's about, uh, making a change to a system, and 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 then seeing uh, what what happens when you make that change in the system. Uh, causal graphs. Um, the best way to explain it um, is, let me get this. There's a nice explanation here that I've put down. Uh, yes, this is, so it's the basically graphical models are the language of consolidated, right? So as you, you've seen here, uh, I mean, we can we can discuss, right? But it's not really visual, right? It's we don't even have like the right terminology for some of these things, right? But when you put, uh, you know, when you add like graphical models in the mix, then you have a way to communicate, right? Uh, so with any field, you know, once you have a language for that field, you know, you've got certain words that, you know, are properly defined, uh, then you know uh, it's easier to communicate about ideas in that field, right? So that's what, you know, graphical, um, you know, uh, causal models are about, or, you know, causal graphs are about, to say, you know, how do we communicate uh, about uh, causal, causality or, you know, uh, or causal inference and, and the invention there was is the graphical models, which actually allows you to talk about, you know, uh, different things uh, like, you know, um, yeah, so it, it allows you to talk about uh, various things in, 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 in that field. Um, yeah, so let me see anything here. Yeah, okay, so I mean, the other thing is that, you know, they've got, they've got different um, ways uh, to, you know, to talk about. So uh, it's not, I mean, graphical models, uh, the way I see it, it's, they're being used in causal inference, but they're not only unique to causal inference. Uh, as you can see in statistics, econometrics, epidemiology that are being used. Uh, even in computer science, I, I know them from computer science, um, you know, for example, DEGS, which is the directed uh, acyclic graph, uh, you find it a lot. Uh, in, you know, like even Spark in terms of executions, but it's just showing you, you know, what is the process, you know, of, you know, uh, something happening and what then happens after that, right? If you, you know, remove an edge, what then happens, right? Um, I'm not sure if I have a nice graph of that here. I think I have it here. <laughs> so I can show you what it sort of looks like. Okay, so this is this is one example, right? So as I was explaining, you know, uh, seeing, which is just observing versus doing, right? Which is now you are, uh, you know, taking part in the in in the environment, right? Which means when you make it, you do something, you change the environment, and then now you want to see once you've changed the environment, then what happens, right? So this is an example of a causal graph. So you've got, you know, as 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 like input, you've got, you know, the season. Right, maybe Susan has got, you know, uh, you can think of of this X that we're looking at here, uh, that we're looking at here, this this being the X or or this one that we're looking at here, right? And there, um, where was I? Okay, so there, right? Like you can see, it's just X one here. Now they're just saying maybe it's one input, but it could be any number of inputs there. Even here, it could be any number of inputs. So when you have that, 
And there are two things that can happen, right? So either there's a sprinkler that is on, it could be on and off, or, you know, it's raining, right? So when it drains, then, you know, of course, the, the, the grass or the, or the soil will get wet and become slippery, right? So here, it's, we're just observing. Right. We're just observing, we're not, you know, doing anything to the system. But then, so we can't really determine causality from just seeing, right? Uh, because we don't know that it maybe it's just a correlation. It doesn't mean that, you know, uh, maybe those things were kept together, but the one does not make the other one to happen, right? But what you can do is that you could, you know, turn the sprinkler on, right? And then you can say, okay, cool. So it means that when the sprinkler is on, you know, it does get wet and it does, uh, you know, become slippery. Right? Um, there is, um, I think, ideas about um, bias, you know, Bayesian um, uh, inference as well. I'm not sure if I can find a nice graph for that to just uh, explain, but it's about you know, sort of what they call conditional probabilities. Um, yeah, conditional independence, right? Um, so uh, this doesn't explain it nicely. Um, okay, so you can see, I'm not sure if this is very clear. I'm gonna need to maximize it. But here it's just the question of, for example, when you see this, let's forget about all the others, just look at this, this one P p of x2 given x1 right so for example this is the probability of being wet given that the sprinkler is on let's say x1 is the sprinkler is on right and now we can say that you know um because we've we've, we've maybe turned the sprinkler on and off and then we've you know maybe there's a uh there's a there's a control with you know and then there's a um, there's actual treatment, right? So you can say that, you know, there's, there's a sort of a high probability that when the sprinkler is on, it will definitely get wet, right? So this is in, in, in Bayesian, um, you know, inference, this is, this is what they use, the conditional uh, probability of, you know, having something, right? And something, what, what are the chances of X2 happening given that X1 has already happened, right? So there's a, it's actually a nice graph, uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, so I did say that I'm using a, a, I'm using a new machine. So uh, okay, now that's fine. But um, so I think I can find it from here. Yeah, this is the graph. Uh, so I can open it here, <coughs> right? So this is this is sort of the idea, right? So you've got, you know, the prior, which is, you know, uh, the current environment, and you've got the posterior, which is, you know, what has actually happened after that. Right? So you can see this maybe as the X one, right, that we have here, as as the um, as the X one that we have here, and then the posterior being the X two. I've lost it. Having too many new windows is a problem to close some of those windows. Right? So that would be, you know, what you have. And of course, it does have its probability distribution as well. And the posterior also has its probability uh, distribution. Uh, but yeah, so that's, you know, and then now when, you know, the posterior has already happened. So what is, you know, the sort of the likelihood or propensity of, you know, a, some is some outcome happening you know like what is the prop, uh, propensity or or the likelihood of or the probability of something actually happening given you know this two given that you know this is the before and this is the after you know what did, so if we change um you know x1 what then actually happens there um i hope that makes sense um so okay i'm not I'm not check. I didn't check the comments. Maybe you know, Anastasia. Maybe you can help me if someone is saying something on the chat and, and I don't see it. Okay. So, so essentially, that's that, right? Um, by way of explaining what causal graphs actually are um, and and what they do, right? Uh, 
and now okay so so the next thing so like i was saying that in this example that we have here right it's not really visual right uh what is actually visual is we have another uh, package uh, that we can make use of I think it should be open somewhere. Okay, it's open here. Yeah. <coughs> so this package right allows you to actually draw uh, causal uh, uh, graphical models, right? Uh, it's called uh, causal graphical models, right? How apt, right? And you can actually you know create like a graph there, right? Uh, you can see it's directed essay click, which means that you know you don't have you know like uh, you know, uh, sort of arrows pointing backwards, right? That's why they call dangs, right? So you don't have arrows point, pointing backwards, right? So everything is is, is forward looking, right? You've got season, you've got sprinkler, you've got rain, and where that gets wet, and then it becomes, uh, you know, slippery. So you can, you know, sort of draw this. So this is, you know, <clears throat> you've got your edges and you've got your nodes, uh, you know, so this would be your edges, right? So from season to rain, this is an edge, right? On, an edge connects nodes. Right, and all those nodes, season, sprinkler, you know, they're just, um, uh, I'd say, uh, things in the environment, like observables in the environment, right? So, this you can observe the season, you can observe the rain, you can observe the sprinter, whether it's wet and whether it's spring, uh, slipper, right? And then the edge, edges, you know, connect all those different things, right? From season to rain, is like some correlation there, etc. So you can draw this, um, uh, these things, um, and and actually, you know, sort of uh, figure out, uh, you know, what your system uh, sort of looks like, right? Uh, so it's a, it's a nice package that, that you can look at. Um, yeah, so you can play around with, with this package. Uh, I haven't played around with it much, but it looks promising, right? Um, yeah. So that's that. I'm not sure if I'm missing anything there, uh, but you can talk about you know uh, causal inference without mentioning uh, Judy Appel, who is like the father of causal inference. Um, you know him and and his research uh, research group have done a lot of work, uh, you know for for the field of causal inference, and. Uh, what's most important is that he won this uh, Turing Award. Uh, which is the, they call it the Nobel Prize of Computer Science, right? So he won that, which is great. And two of, of his books are very important in this field, you know, causality and uh, in the book of why, right? If you wanna get to know more about that. Um, so I did say, I think this warrants me to go back to the beginning. So I did say that, you know, so this is, you know, maybe what I can share for now, um, I do have, so, yeah, so I left out, you know, sections here, like, you know, breast cancer uh, data example. So what you could do is you could play around with this uh, code and replace it with the actual data that, that you have, which you can download from, from Kaggle. Uh, and then you can also play around with this other package uh, that, I've, that I've shown you here with the actual data that you have, uh, the cancer data, and, and see uh, what you get. I think. Uh, that's your assignment, uh, basically. Uh, but anyway, just to sort of circle back and, and link it to say, you know, causal inference is, is not alone in this in this thinking, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, so if I, I think if I mean for the there, Musa. Yeah, someone speaking. Yeah. Uh, I have one question. You have a question? Please, please go. Yeah. Okay, so uh, on the causal graph uh, part, uh, um, the yeah. task we've been given is actually, uh, it requires us to generate the graph from uh, the provided data asset. Uh, so we don't actually know exactly what uh, each node uh, is related to the others. So we're, I think we're expected to generate the causal graph using the data set provided. So uh, is there a way, is there uh, like a Python library we can use to uh, perform that task just using the data set. I know there are algorithms yeah. like PC algorithm uh, and uh, others that allows us to predict uh, possible uh, 
graph based on uh, observational data sets. So, uh, if you know any, if you if you have any suggestion, maybe. Um, not really. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping uh, that uh, you know this this package uh, can help. Uh, but I say that you know, um, yeah, I'm hoping that it can help. I'm not sure. Uh, you know what it can yeah how much it can do so maybe like a combination of using this graphical causal graphical models and and and, and this one this causal inference can can help uh, yeah yeah i'm not i'm not sure i haven't i haven't attempted but my gut feeling is that some combination of the two uh can help uh so what it doesn't say right so from from you know from uh yeah, from, from my schooling years, what I remember is that what you can do uh, between these two is that you can assign like some sort of probability of, you know, of some sort, right, between, you know, season and rain. So this is not, you know, P equals one, it could be like P equals, you know, 0 0.8, right? Uh, so, or, you know, maybe it's not a probability, maybe it's an actual uh, value, right, like you see here. Right, it's an actual value. It's 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 the radius mean, right? Uh, so so you can actually with these graphs. Um, so I'm not saying this is a definite answer. I'm saying this is this is actually what I would try. Um, okay, did I lose something? Uh, I lost the the other thing that I was looking at. Uh, okay, that's here. So what I'm saying is that. Here, you know, you could you sort of give it a weight of some sort. So maybe these values that you see here, you know, are, are the actual weights, or maybe it could be a probability or something like that. So I'm saying you could use, you know, some combination of, you know, the causal inference library and also this other one, um, this graphic, uh, graph, uh, causal graphical uh, models. It's like a tongue twister now, right? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I don't have a definite answer, but that's that's where I'll start. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so I don't have a more definite answer, but that's where I'd, I'd look uh, in terms of, you know, getting getting those uh, causal graphical models, uh, looking at the actual data that, that you've, been, you've been given. Uh, is this the any other question? I'm not sure. Uh, Anastasia, do you have a better answer? No, no, no. Uh, someone is saying uh, causal necks. Um, yeah, I, I did see something like this, uh, but I haven't really invested. I think it's there in your, if you look at um, the, the challenge, uh, there's, you know, causal necks, uh, constructing uh, causal graphs using Bayesian networks. So, this this tool here that you can use uh, but i haven't really uh, played around with it but it, it yeah it's really sort of similar to what uh, this cross causal graphical uh, models does uh, so i i don't see the actual graphs being drawn maybe it's just not visualizing but yeah it's it's worth uh, looking at as well uh, binyam does so give you some idea. That's a good suggestion. I would look into those resources. Thank okay. you. So I can give you a different answer. <laughs> no, don't worry. But if you can, if you maybe can share us the notebook you've been using previously, that would be good. Yeah, I've, I've in the in the presentation, I've got all the links there for you. So I'll share that. The presentation has already been shared. It's it's in here. It's this one. So all the links are in there. Oh, okay. I think, uh -huh. I think Benyam is talking about your notebook, the one on your notebook. That one is not opening. Oh, I see. This one, this one here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is just a link, but it's, it's linked to my machine. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll upload this as well. It's actually a work in progress. I think I could do better, but I'll share it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what I wanted to say, um, also, okay. So maybe a little bit about 
counterfactuals, which I think I've, uh, I've left out, which is a, a very important concept. Uh, but it's it's really more like um, what I was showing. I think it's nicely explained somewhere here. So the fundamental equation of counterfactual says if uh, everything we know solve the equation under a simple mutilation of the model, right? So mutilation. So what is what is a mutilation? Um, it would be so you have, you know, you could just think of this as, as your, your graphical model, right? Uh, you know, use that. And this happens. And this happens. And either of these two things can happen. And you know, what other things are actually fed into? contribute to you know x happening or y happening etc right uh it's just a, just a, it's just a generic uh, system right so you know so you do x right so this is now you are pit tipping the system you're doing something uh, to the system right which means in this case you are removing uh like the the connection uh, between z and x right so you want to understand that you know when you're when you remove that, what then actually happens, right? So that's you know one of the ways that you can try to figure out uh, causality by actually you know removing some of the connections. Uh, you can think of it. Not that I think about it. But you can think of this as you know like you know with dropout, for example, in machine learning, right? So it's a similar idea. What if you remove uh, some of the edges? Then what do you actually get, right? Can you actually determine uh, causality from from there? Right? So I think that's the fundamental idea. <clears throat> behind uh, counterfactuals uh, but of course uh, there's more uh, theory uh, that, that you can learn uh, from there right that's my short explanation of that uh, but you know what i also want to do uh, before we wrap up is you know like i was saying you know similar ideas are you know what you could do with a b testing right i think i have a nice explanation here of what an example of if an a b test uh, so here, that's, you know, also known as split testing, randomized experiment, experimentation process wherein two or more versions of a variable are shown to different uh, segments of website visitors, right? So, um, you know, you are trying to figure out maybe you made, I think they, they do it a lot uh, in, in most websites where they actually, I've just seen it now with Google, they're asking me, you know, you know, to change between chat and hangout, right? Uh, so other people are probably used to using hangout other people are using chat so they want to see you know what is the adoption between the two so that before they actually switch the whole system right so that's what you could you know you, that's one way of doing an a b test you know so you give some people uh you know a different version of of the of the same thing and then you try to understand uh, what is the uptake right um yeah, because of course, maybe you're trying to optimize uh, something, right? Like with us here, we're trying to uh, figure out, you know, you know, what happens to the target, uh, you know, the diagnosis, why, right? So you can, you know, do some perturbations, etc. So that's why I'm saying it's really uh, closely related. You, you know, you, you feed the user certain things, uh, and then you, you determine based on that uh, what the output becomes, right? And then you can, you know, make a decision based on that. You can say, okay, cool. Now I've seen that this causes this, right? Um, and so that's one way of doing it. Actually, that's, this, you know, another way of looking at it um, as, as A-B testing. Some actually say that A-B testing is, is one way of implementing uh, causal inference because you know like as you've seen causal inference really is just it's mis mostly theoretical right but in the real world you know how do you determine such th such things how do you actually do an experiment right so that's one way um i'm not sure if i i didn't put a reference to this concept here uh, which is feature toggles right this is actually one of my favorite uh actually i think i have it at the end here just quickly um okay this is it <coughs> okay. 
so they're also called feature flags, right? Uh, so it's it's very similar to to A/B testing, right? Um, so allowing to you know the technique that allows teams to modify system behavior uh, without changing code, uh, they will fall into various usage categories uh, take when implementing. Um, but it's it's sort of um, you know similar to uh, A/B testing, right? You wanna you wanna implement a new feature, right? Uh, so, you, but what you could do is you could you know switch it on or switch it off, right? And then see you know how the behavior in in that uh, system actually works. That's why it's called a toggle, right? Because you can switch it on, you can switch it off, right? Um, so you still have the, the feature in the system. But you can just turn it off or you can just turn it off to see to test something to see you know maybe what is the uptake uh, does it degrade the system does it improve the you know is the performance of the system still the same um you know so th this this article goes into more depth uh about you know um how you can actually do that it shows, it shows you some code uh, that you can write you know so for example if you know using your algorithm then you know give this uh, as as output. Otherwise, you know use the old um, <clears throat> you know algorithm, for example, or you, the old system, right? So you can see that you know um, you can set these things, right? That's why you can set the feature to be on or to be off, and then you can see. I think there is another uh, word for it, um, like I think uh, red, blue, something, right? So when it's you know red. Then this is what happens when it's blue. So yeah, I'm not sure what the actual colors are, but you know, you know, the, you can use those colors to say when you have this color, then this happens. When you have that other color, this happens, right? So it's you know it's something that maybe you want to look at. It's a bit of an advanced concept, but you know, it's something that uh, in in software engineering they use to develop software, right? Like you know, highly um, complex of software <clears throat> but i mean it does simplify things so that you don't have to you just set a flag you don't have to delete code etc you just set the flag and then something is shown uh etc uh, so that's another thing that you could look at uh so the other thing that i have here <clears throat> i don't have much content for but just want to mention a little bit is that these things you know uh are actually being used for example by netflix in in recommender systems right where in the you know, they randomize, uh, you know, some movies to see, you know, if, you know, you'll take it up or not, right? And then based on whether you watch it or you don't, then they can decide whether to keep recommending that to you, right? Uh, you can do it with Chen. Uh, so, for example, in Chen modeling, Chen is about if you have a, a, a user who's using a product, you want to know whether they'll keep using the product or not, right? So, some, so Chen is like a, uh, I'd say it's, you know, the idea of, of the posterior, right? So now you've seen that, you know, this person has churned, right? So let's say someone has churned after three months, right? Um, what you want to do is, you know, figure out that, you know, because once it's happened, you, you don't know whether uh, what impacted the churn, right? So maybe what you want to do is you want to group similar users together, right? Uh, which is a similar idea to recommend a system of group similar users together. So even here you can group similar product users together. And then if if some, you, uh, you know, people from, from that group churn, right? You can say, okay, you know, before, if, if in two months, if this is the behavior, does it in the third month, does it also lead to churn or not, right? So that's something that uh, you can actually uh, check. Uh, same with cross-selling and upselling to say, you know, uh, if this user has this product, will they be able, can I cross-sell them to have the other product because of similar users, etc. cetera. Um, but you, you know, for this, you can, you, can, you know, you need to determine whether, you know, um, certain, there's a causal uh, effect between, you know, having the one product and having the other, right? And also if you have a product, will you take up more of that product, for example, right? Which is which what leads us to lift modeling, which is a bit more advanced concept. Uh, but you know, you can implement that using A B testing because you want to know that you know maybe you, you market a product, right? Does you know marketing a product actually uh, influence the uptake or not, right? And that's why you know uh, across all of all of the talk, we're talking about you know not just observing a system, but also 
uh, making changes in the system to see uh, the outcome of that, right? And yeah, so um, like I was saying, this is these are some examples where you know you could fuse causal inference with some machine learning, uh, but I believe that uh, this is still an nascent field uh, in in terms of how to apply uh, machine learning to to that. Uh, but yeah, these are like some applications that I can think of. <clears throat> and yeah, you've seen that, uh, you know, some packages that we've used, the two packages that we've used, uh, that which are Python based that you can play around with. And there's a third one <clears throat> um, that was suggested, which is Cosal Mix. So I'm not sure if there's any other questions there. Uh, yeah, that's my um, small uh, treatise of this. Um, yeah. Not really an expert, but um, yeah, I hope you, you've learned something from that as I have while preparing uh, this tutorial. Do you have any questions? Yeah, so here, yeah. <coughs> Well, there are no questions. So I've put in uh, lots of, you know, like references here uh, that, that you can look at. Yeah, actually, this would not work because this is local to my environment, but it did help me open it. Uh, but I'll uh, upload the notebook itself. Uh, please just go through uh, this. Um, so one of the important resources is this uh, Vignet here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's open, this one. This one will actually, it's a good explanation of, you know, how to use the causal inference uh, tool, right? Uh, you know, the propensity score estimation, uh, improving COVID. So it's got a lot of, a lot of things. So defining the sample, you know, which is of course splitting the sample. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, information. So I think this is the main website is not really useful, but I found this uh, PDF really, really useful. Uh, and of course, there's there's uh, that other notebook for drawing the extra graphs. Um, yeah, I think uh, if there are no more questions, I'll just check one last time. If there are no more questions, uh, we can call it a day. Uh, I hope that was of, of, of some use uh, to to some, at least to some of you. Are there no more questions? Something that wasn't clear? Okay. Yeah, but I hope, you know, in terms of, um, you know, in terms of what I put here, see, you know, if you can think about, you know, all those concepts together, see where causal inference fits in, fit, see that, you know, it's not a it's not an idea which is you know you know unique to statistics and it's also an application in some other fields uh, in machine learning and also in just you know traditional software engineering um, and it's something that you've actually looked at when you looked at uh, AB or hypothesis testing. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think with that uh, we can call it a day. Um, I'm just gonna. Turn off the recording. Um, oh, uh, Anastasia, you're the one who's recording. Okay, actually, I think okay, I have the ability to. Um, cheers, guys. Uh, we'll meet on Slack. <laughs>